The show was invented 40 years ago and has now won more Emmy Awards than any television show in history. Just walked away with a Lifetime Achievement Award at the Emmys with a standing ovation from, I think, everyone who ever worked in daytime television. Uh, but we know today that children are using applications that weren't invented then. And media and technology is getting faster, smaller, and cheaper. So it's a world of on-demand media, portability. Those are places that we have to be because those are the access points to where kids are going to find Sesame Street. And this was actually the first year that we have ever seen more people and more children are accessing Sesame Street content off television than on television. And that's through video on demand, that's through iTunes, that's through YouTube, that's through our website, that's mm -hmm. through all of the different ways in which we are spreading our content now because that's where the audience is going. Sesame Street was one of two preschool shows in 1988. Today there are 54 mm -hmm. on television. Yeah. So just if you plainly look at market share, um, you're not going to be able to have the same market share you did 20 years ago. But I think more importantly is uh, kids and parents are just accessing media. I mean, I was just chatting with uh, someone at the University of California here who told me about her daughter who, uh, who uh, does not watch television. But when she sees mom on her laptop, sits down in her lap and says, can we watch Elmo for 10 minutes? And I think that's what's happening now. I think you're finding parents who are trying to have more of a control over their child's uh, viewing habits and behaviors. The, the TV becomes less of an available babysitter. And interactive technologies give us all the ability, I think, to have a more vibrant, richer learning experience than one-way television was. I think that we have to have some safe spaces for children mm -hmm. uh, where moms and dads can leave their kids uh, in a place where they're not going to be marketed to, uh, where they're going to uh, be safe from uh, uh, commercial messaging. And it's a place where uh, kids are going to have a learning experience because we do know uh, even with the youngest kids that television teaches. As Joan Gans Cooney always says, it's not whether television teaches, it's what does it teach. Mm -hmm. So we've got to be in, a, in those spaces today just as we were in 1969. Think about how the world of media has changed in the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. I mean, the internet did not exist 20 years ago, at least in a popular format. Children's uh, content platforms are still children's content platforms. Mm -hmm. And so you have these iconic characters who have a huge influence over children. So when a, a major character on some channel is promoting double cheeseburgers, that has a big influence on that child's behavior. Um, and so what you can look at are some of those things. In It doesn't really matter with the distribution platform. You're looking at the use of licensed characters, for instance, to promote unhealthy lifestyles. And those are the things I think that those of us who care about children's health need to do something about and that's what we're, we're focusing on along with a lot of other people. Well we feel that um, we're just beginning to unleash the power of digital media in learning applications. There's a lot of people sort of talking about it. This is a way of uh, having a specific focus on six to nine year olds uh, which the Joan Gantz Cooney Center is focused on mm -hmm. and trying to promote uh, digital learning in, for literacy, um, using online platforms and also specifically mobile learning platforms. Uh, so for instance the iPod Touch could be a very powerful learning platform uh, without a cell phone for instance which may interrupt a classroom setting. But the iPod Touch and being able to connect uh, content is a way of maybe maybe getting kids who are otherwise disengage from learning in a, in a way which reaches them more directly. So what we're trying to do is spur innovation by having a, a prize a contest, for instance, in which we will be giving cash awards um, to uh, the most innovative uh, people who come forward and the most innovative ideas. We hope those will spur innovation. We hope that these can be incubated to go to market. And, it w and frankly, we hope that other people will copy this. Mm -hmm. We want to we want to start a movement in which we challenge the conventional wisdom in, in the gaming community, for instance, that education can't sell. And that's the same challenge that Joan Cooney had when she was told that education can't sell on television. Well, 
We certainly know that is not the case. You now got 54 shows, you got six competing networks, and it was all started because uh, at a dinner party in Manhattan, two people got together and thought about the idea of using television to teach something other than sugared cereal. Mm -hmm. And uh, look what happened. So we think you can fast forward to 2009, have a similar outcome. So what we want to do is jumpstart a little bit with these awards.